Yes, there uh, may be some truth to that. And it bothers you that I'm a woman with skills. Well, as a uh, woman with practical skills, uh, maybe you should stay home and have babies. Don't be upset, Cookie. You're going to be rich. I'm already rich. Five years from now, Gary Ewing is going to make J.R. seem middle class. You know, I'm glad we had this chance to chat. It's important for me to know where my business associates stand. And uh, where's that, Cookie? In the 19th century. You may think that women belong at home, barefoot and pregnant, but uh, you've never dealt with me before. By the way, don't call me Cookie. Mrs. Ewing? We have the results, Mrs. Ewing. I'm Mrs. Ewing. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mrs. Ewing. I'm Dr. Lador. Your husband is an extremely lucky man. He, uh, he'll be bruised, but there are no broken bones that we can find. Oh, that's good. We do have to keep him here 48 hours, though. Why? For observation, he uh, lost consciousness briefly after the wreck, and we need to make sure there are no contusions and no concussion. Can I see him? Of course. I'll show you the way. Thank you for coming, Jill. I'll tell Gary you were here. <sighs> you really are a glutton for losing causes, aren't you? Cheer up. It's not as if you're going to be poor. Half of Gary's money is a fortune. All of Gary's money is a fortune. Half of it is half a fortune. He hurt me. Nobody gets away with that. It would be a, a shame to throw away. Well, I mean, if you underestimate her feelings. Look, I may, I may be out of line, but making too much of this, but I'm really worried about Olivia. She's so vulnerable. Karen. You're right. But you are out of line. I must be crazy. Well, you are if you think I'd give you the job back. Well, it wouldn't do you any good if you did. Because <laughs> I would never work for you. Or anyone even remotely like you ever again. Oh, Ben. <sighs> I was hoping you would ask for your job back. It would give me the opportunity to uh, turn you down cold. Now I guess I'll have to settle for having you thrown out. Don't bother. I'm gone. But you can be guaranteed I won't be back ever again. Oh, and I was afraid this meeting was going to end unpleasantly. Oh, Ben. Uh, don't forget to remember me to Valine. Your little friend is here. Uh, Joe. Don't touch me. I'm not coming between you two, am I? Can I talk to you a minute? Sure. You're fired. <laughs> what? You can collect your severance pay in accounting. What did I do? The better question is, what didn't you do? Gary? You ready for me now? Jill, let the uh, second Mrs. Ewing give the soon-to-be third Mrs. Ewing a friendly warning. The first Mrs. Ewing doesn't go away. Ever. One wrong move. Just one. We'll be expected to attend all of them up in Sacramento. 
And what happens if I don't? Do you tell my mommy? And then Gary or Val or maybe both of them will tell you that the only reason that they get together is for the sake of the children. And then Gary will uh, take her home. And then they'll go to bed together. By the way, don't call me Cookie. Are you and my husband having an affair? I'm not saying we're having an affair. And I'm not saying we're not. I am saying I can have him any time I want him. Do you think that the reason that I get under your skin is because you're afraid of me? Because I understand you. I understand how you think. And I've watched you operate. And you know something? We're two of a kind. And I think that you're worried that I'm better at what you do than you are. I'm so flattered that you want to be like me. But don't flatter yourself into thinking we're at all alike. Everything I have, I've earned. Everything you have, you've been given. I know it galls you, it galls people of your class to see a woman like me who's earned what you thought was yours by birth. People like you are threatened by people like me because deep down, you're afraid you're not gonna be able to cut it without your trust fund. You know something? You're right. Well, I swear, Jim, I don't know what you're talking about. 